Hi everybody, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts. Now it's a very special day for us today because this car is going back to its owner who is on their way to see us now. Um, now I haven't really shown this car very much. I think we saw it with the engine out when we were talking about the motor, but now that she's complete, I thought we'd give you a bit of a run through of what's actually been done and, and how it behaves now. Um, so it's a 1986 Land Rover 90, which was built for the military, um, which you can see by these um, lights up the front and a couple other bits here and there. Um, and what we've done to it is put a net gain Hyper 9 electric motor underneath there somewhere, which is connected to the original gearbox and therefore the original transfer box and therefore the original four wheel drive system. So we haven't mucked around with things like um, differentials, axles, gearboxes, etc. All that's still exactly the same. All that's happening is it's being turned by 120 horsepower worth of electricity. Okay, so that motor is linked up to five Tesla batteries, which are in a box up the front. Um, so all five Tesla modules sit in the front, um, running this car at approximately 125 volts. Um, now there's a couple of extra special things on this car that's beyond what we did on our previous Defenders. So come in and have a look. First one is electric power steering. Now this one is an electric power steering um, pump out of a, a, an old Vauxhall actually, um, which basically takes the original power steering mechanism that wasn't actually original with this car, but it was put in previously, and it's just powering that. Um, so this, this Land Rover has steering almost too light. It feels a bit weird for a Land Rover. Um, coming over to the other side, we've got uh, the original heater box here. So that has now got an electric element in it. So think of like a like a hairdryer that's got a 125 volt hairdryer in it and running on the original intakes and the original um, 12 volt fan now pushes super hot air into the cab, onto the windscreen um, and into the footwells as per the original ducting inside the car. So you really do have instant heat in the morning, um, which is great because you know the car's not very well insulated and it's gonna be a bit cold um, without that. So let's have a bit of a closer look inside our lovely aluminium casing here. Now, a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot about owning an electric classic is that it looks fantastic. It looks very different when you go to shows, etc. So we designed this to look a little bit aircrafty, um, you know, like lines of rivets, aluminium, um, to try and suit the, the era of this vehicle, let's say. But under here is where the magic really happens. Um, so the, the high voltage systems are here and the 12 volt systems are here. Now, ultimately what you've got is power coming in from the battery box, which is beneath, going into contactors, which are when you turn the ignition, they allow power to go into the system. This power then goes to a couple of places. The main one is into the inverter here. Now the inverter is what powers the motor. It's what talks to the throttle. Um, so when you press the throttle more, this sucks more power out of the batteries. Um, it also goes to things like the DC-DC converter here, which ultimately takes 125 volts and turns it into 14 volts, which powers the original 12 volt system. So the original headlights, original wipers, none of that is touched. It's simply powered by ultimately the best alternator in the world. Other than that, we've got battery management systems. So we're talking to every single cell group in the battery pack. Um, and ultimately, what that allows is for us to really watch the systems really closely, make sure temperatures are okay, make sure voltage is okay, and make sure current is all okay, so we don't end up ruining the battery pack, okay? So there's a quick overview of the front. Now we're gonna close this up and we're gonna go and take it for a quick spin and we'll show you what happens. So now we're inside the vehicle. We've done a couple of extra um, things on top of the electrification just to make this car a little bit more um, comfortable for modern day driving beyond its sort of military spec, if that makes sense. So we've done things like retrim the, the dashboard here, get some, you know, a nice kit on there. We've got a new steering wheel, which really gives that premium feel like you should in an electric classic car. New seats have gone in. Um, a new center cubby box here is also quite nice. Um, new mats, for example. And then also in the back, we've got side-facing seats, um, which are all brand new. I think they've actually still got the plastic on them. 
because this car will now be used every day for things like the school run, for shopping trips, etc., rather than being a dirty old smoky diesel that you couldn't trust was gonna start every morning. Now it'll be used every single day, plugged in at home, and off we go. So the only thing that is not original in here is this um, panel here, which is the drive selector, so drive, neutral, reverse. Um, a battery meter telling us we've got 100% of power in here, and we also fitted a little USB charger per the owner's request too. Um, so jump in and let's go and have a go. So she, like our, all of our other cars that we've built, um, she we leave her in third gear most of the time and it, you just drive it like normal but without the clutch at all. So all I'm gonna do now is put it in third gear, flick it into drive and now my foot on the accelerator and it's completely silent. So let's go on a little drive and see how it works. So we're just cruising down the little farm track where our workshop is, um, out onto some country lanes now. And I, and I think while we stop here, I'm gonna quickly show you um, how the power steering actually works. So I can now steer a Land Rover with just my finger. That's full lock left. And that's full lock right there. So pretty amazing really, not something that we're really used to or we do very often um, because a lot of cars don't have that power steering when they come to us, therefore we don't put it in. This one had power steering running off the engine and therefore we managed to just power that same system with the electric pump that we saw earlier. Um, so let's go and give her a spin. I'm gonna put my, foot, we're in third gear, I'm gonna put my foot down here and we can see how she takes off and off we go. Now all the noise in here, um, not that there is very much or even close to as much as there was before, it's mostly original parts. Um, so things like the gearbox and the transfer case do whine and, and groan a little bit, but that's only in the same way that they did originally, okay? Obviously you couldn't hear them before because all you could hear was the diesel engine um, running along. So now you can hear that slight, that slight whir as we go. It's quite a cool noise really once you get used to it. So off we go. And let's show you some regen. So this car we've actually upped the regen on, um, the regen to braking compared to our previous ones. Just to give that little bit more of one pedal driving feel. So if I come all the way up the throttle now, we feel that it very quickly slows down with no brake input. Now that's charging the batteries up again, um, and but more is just a, a nice driving experience rather than having to push on the brakes, which although in this car are pretty good, for a Land Rover, you know, they're nothing like your, your equivalent um, modern car. Now, because we've got the original gearbox in here and the original clutch pedal, etc., etc., we have actually still got all the gears. Now, third gear is, is perfect for taking off and around town, but if you were going to be going to sit on a motorway or on a big A road, all you have to do is push your clutch in and flick it into fourth. Now we're in fourth gear. It's basically the same, but when I put my foot down, there's a little bit less take up. Okay, she still is fine and you can still drive her in fourth all the time, but you're better off using third gear around town um, because it's a little bit more efficient, a little bit less strain on everything. But now we'll drive around in fourth for a bit. Um, one of the other lovely extras in this car is the heater box that I spoke about earlier. Now, this is on the original switch, so I flick that down and now, We've got a little bit of cold air, but very quickly, that heater element will start heating that air up a lot. We've got hot air coming out at our feet about now and all over the windscreen. So a really nice option there, especially as we're coming into winter as this car is delivered. It's gonna keep us nice and toasty, but really nice on the original switch there. Okay, so, so nothing that we don't have to put a fancy new switch in for.